This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Huge thanks to those guys for supporting the channel. Powerlifting and kettlebell training are such a great pairing that I think literally anyone who does one of these training modalities could benefit from at least dabbling in the other. Now to be clear, I'm not saying that this is the perfect way that everyone should be training. In fact, I'm not really much of a powerlifter myself. So all I'm really saying is that combining two different training modalities is a great way to start getting more variety in your training and to cover a more comprehensive training profile. And for that reason, kettlebell training and powerlifting is just another combination that works so well together that I think a lot of people could benefit from. Let's start with powerlifting. Powerlifting is fantastic for building raw max strength and this translates to a lot of other aspects of performance. This is why a lot of people consider powerlifting and the big three lifts to be one of the best things you can do if you want to improve your overall sports performance, strength, fitness, etc. It can improve mobility in certain areas, it can help to make you more resilient against injury for things like bending over and picking things up off the ground and it's fantastic for building bone density, core strength and you get some hypertrophy in there as well if you're interested in building muscle. It just makes really big powerful people. What powerlifting isn't so good for though on the other hand is variety. Powerlifting is very much linear, it's very much in the sagittal plane, up and down, up and down, three lifts with a few accessories potentially. This won't give you the full range of benefits that you can get from something like functional training say. You're not moving at all in the frontal plane, you never move side to side against resistance, you never move in the transverse plane, the rotational plane, you're not talking the hips or the waist and this is a big omission because this is something that you really need in everyday life whether it's wrestling whether it's moving furniture all the examples I give all the time even throwing even running twisting the body is actually how we generate power an awful lot of the time. Powerlifting also doesn't do much for your work capacity or your endurance if you're doing a lot of max lifts or you know three to four reps to focus on building strength then you aren't going to be getting that cardio. Now some people have argued that if you train with a really heavy weight then you're going to be able to do more repetitions of a lighter weight and therefore you don't need work capacity specific training, you don't need cardio and while there's an element of truth in this it changes when we're talking about things like 100 reps of push-ups and whilst that might sound extreme this is something that's a little bit more similar to say wrestling or sparring or doing a day's manual labour and in terms of cardio and systemic endurance there's really no arguing that powerlifting is particularly good for that. If you want to be a long distance runner or play any kind of sport, so even go up the stairs without getting out of breath, then just doing powerlifting, just getting heavier and heavier and focusing on just a few repetitions, it's just not gonna cut it. So you need to combine this with strength endurance and work capacity if you want to be able to exert that force, that power for a longer period of time. Powerlifting also lacks things like single leg strength and balance and mobility in some other areas. And whilst people don't like to hear that their chosen training modality has flaws or doesn't cover everything, this is just the reality. Kettlebell training, on the other hand, is fantastic in pretty much all the ways that powerlifting isn't and lacks all the things that powerlifting offers. So kettlebell training, let's start with the negatives this time. It's not so good for building really big tree trunk legs because normally with a kettlebell, you're gonna be working with you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 kilograms maybe. You can get heavier kettlebells, but they're really rare. And the way you use them is a little bit different. You're not gonna be focusing on that max strength. So kettlebell training just doesn't cut it for building max strength. It's not ideal for hypertrophy either. It's harder to build lots of muscle definition or big biceps because again, you're working with these lighter weights and those weights are performed in very compound, very explosive, very swingy motions that aren't ideal for isolation or causing muscle damage or causing metabolic stress. But where kettlebell training is fantastic, of course, is that it does build work capacity and it does build strength endurance because you're using it for longer rep ranges. Something like a kettlebell swing, you can do for 50 to 100 repetitions and because it has this circular motion, it actually really lends itself to that kind of training. And the same goes for many of the other exercises, whether it's halos, whether it's atlas swings or anything like that. At the same time, kettlebell training is also perfect for training in the transverse plane, the rotational plane, because you can do things like the atlas swing, like the halos, where you're twisting the body or twisting the arms or twisting the hips. Likewise, there's plenty of movements in the frontal plane with kettlebells. For example, you can do like a deep Cossack squat. It's also brilliant for building core strength and stability in all the ways that are missing from powerlifting. Something like a Turkish getup is brilliant for building shoulder mobility, shoulder stability, and it's fantastic for building real core power and you're moving through all these different unusual ranges of motion. And there's plenty of single leg training you can do with kettlebells, whether it's Bulgarian split squats, whether it's pistol squats or something like that. Of course, the other thing that you don't get as much from powerlifting is 
is explosiveness and rate of force production. Because with powerlifting, as I've discussed before, you're grinding through a really heavy repetition. So because the weight, the resistance is so great, you can't move that quickly, meaning that you're not building explosive power. Kettlebell training, a lot of the movements are very explosive or ballistic to be more precise. And with something like the kettlebell swing, not only are you learning to exert that force really powerfully and quickly, you're also learning to switch rapidly between explosive power output and then total body relaxation, things that can really benefit a powerlifter. And at the same time, kettlebell training does offer some of these same benefits as powerlifting. So for example, powerlifting is fantastic for grip strength, so is kettlebell training. Powerlifting, because you have to grip onto the bar and lift this really big, heavy thing for several repetitions. Kettlebell training, because you need the endurance to grip onto something for a long time that's moving and trying to get away from you. So in other words, they merge perfectly together. If you combine powerlifting with kettlebell training, you'll get lots of benefits that are missing from each of them, and you're gonna combine them to create something really far more comprehensive. You'll have that strength and power and those massive legs and be able to move around like a tank. But at the same time, you also have power and explosiveness in the rotational plane. And you'll be able to use that strength for a long period of time without getting out of breath. The so people have enjoyed me talking about combining modalities in the past, but the criticism I've had is that I haven't provided an actual program. Well, you can see that up on the screen for this now. It's actually the easiest thing to combine because powerlifting, you can simply do the big three lifts for, you know, three sets of four repetitions or whatever you like on each one, a few warm up sets as well. And you can do that say twice a week. Then you can do the kettlebell training twice a week. And here we're just gonna focus on all the things that are missing. So we're gonna do high repetition kettlebell swings to build up some of that work capacity. We're gonna do atlas swings for more work capacity, but also for building that core rotational power. We're gonna do some halos for building shoulder strength and more rotation. And we're gonna be doing some Turkish get-ups as well for all the benefits that brings. A couple of things in the frontal plane, such as Cossack squats, and maybe something for our single leg strength, whether you want to do a Bulgarian split squat or a pistol squat. So there you go, guys. That's another training recommendation that I highly recommend. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Is this a good pairing? And what other two training modalities do you think go particularly well together? And maybe I'll make a video on them if I think there's enough to discuss there. If you want to try a training program that combines not only powerlifting type moves and kettlebell training, but a whole bunch of other stuff as well, then check out my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training 2.0. That is a 80 plus page ebook, as well as over two hours of instructional video and a complete program that's suitable for any level and for any kind of equipment, highly adaptable. That'll be in the description down below. Either way, thank you so much for watching this one, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Whichever your chosen training modality, perhaps you want to share your passion with the world, in which case Squarespace is a fantastic option and also happens to be today's sponsor. So Squarespace is a platform that allows you to build websites extremely easily. It's a fully functional suite of tools used by some of the biggest brands on the net. And you can get a website up and running in literal minutes. You've got easy content creation and publishing. You can schedule publishing. There's community aspects. You can email specific members. You can look at your metrics and track which pages are being more successful or not. There's fully integrated commenting, which supports threaded comments and much more. Member management, social media integration, if you want to post your social posts directly to your site. There's members only areas and e-commerce support for selling products from your site. There's tons and tons of plugins. So even if the wide range of tools that you already have at your disposal don't provide everything you need, you can get them elsewhere. This is great for e-commerce, for example, where you can add things like global tracking for orders, whatever you can think of, you can build it with Squarespace. Head to squarespace.com for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, Bionier viewers can get 10% off their first website or domain by going to squarespace.com forward slash Bionier.